Hello everyone, I'm André Di Stefano, the game director of Gangs of Sherwood and today I'm joined by Sven, our lead game designer and uh, you haven't come empty-handed today, right? So no, I am uh, very excited to uh, give you guys a closer look into the gameplay of Gangs of Sherwood. You guys might have seen already some stuff at uh, Nacon Connect, but uh, we're both here to uh, showcase you a deeper and more uh, extensive look into uh, Gangs of Sherwood. Okay, awesome. Let's get started. At last, Kirkley's Keep. Sinister lair of the Prioress. Wow. I hope we can find some of these workers alive. Your brother included, Tuck. Oh, right. This is the... Um, uh, the Prioress of Kirkley's Castle. Actually, It's a level that takes place around the middle of the game. Uh, where the char characters are already uh, powered up, uh, so they don't have their full move set yet. But as you progress into the game, you develop more moves. This is one of the parts of the levels where where there's no combat, but it's an opportunity for us to develop the narratives, uh, to have the characters talk together um, before actually going in and start the fight. So here you can see the player enter one of the many combat arenas in Gangs of Sherwood where you uh, fight together a large uh, group of enemies together with your friends. Uh, we try to make our combat as uh, dyna uh, dynamic and fluid as possible. And uh, we also make, uh, want to make sure that every character feels unique, like Robin, who you're currently seeing air comboing an enemy, um, um, is our archer. So he has a lot of different arrow types that he can use to um, uh, combo the enemy from afar. And he has uh, those um, floating arrows. Yeah, yeah, those are called uh, star arrows. And yeah. uh, you might have noticed earlier before that uh, if you shoot your shining arrow, that's the yellow arrow yeah. uh, that uh, travels very fast, uh, it would launch all these star arrows uh, towards the enemy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's green. I've heard people suffer all my life. And these arenas are connected uh, by these parts of the level where you have, yeah. we have a bit of platforming mm -hmm. um, and traversal. It's very unique looking for, uh, for like the Robin Hood yeah, uh, it is, mythology. Right. I guess we really, uh, um, you know, their own thing with the uh, traditional Robin Hood story. It's really this mix of medieval and technology. And uh, as you go in this level, it becomes, the technology becomes more and more present, actually. Yeah. Oh, here's another uh, yeah. arena. Yeah. That's a uh, ferrum coil, mm -hmm. so um, that ferrum coil makes it so that all the enemies in the, in the arena become invulnerable. And if you want to try to damage the enemies, you'd have to destroy the ferrum coil first. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. it is Marion. Marion, yeah. yeah. This is our uh, assassin character and uh, she has the unique ability of uh, throwing daggers mm -hmm. that uh, stick on the enemies. And that's that little number you see on top of the uh, enemy's head. And they, uh, Marion has the ability to then trigger those daggers yeah. uh, by performing a specific attack. And that's massive damage. And it does a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. It's a really, it creates this really cool like in-out playstyle yeah. where you pester enemies from afar, and then uh, once the moment is there, you try to yeah. uh, trigger as much daggers as possible. But that's her advanced mechanic, right? Yeah. All the all the characters they have their own yeah. basic playstyle. Yeah. Marion has this sword that. That becomes a chain, but yeah. then she can do, she can do actually this um, this um, dagger stacking. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. We we f uh, we found it important that we design a combat in such a way where like uh, it's easy to get into. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, there's still some room for mastery. The prioress is definitely up to something. Confessions don't require that amount of machinery for sure. Well, no matter how painful they get. Uh, here we come at uh, one of uh, the resistance checkpoints where you can uh, donate uh, the gold you've gathered uh, by playing through the uh, level. Uh, when you donate gold, uh, you can notice at the top left that your uh, team's power level starts to uh, increase. Yep. And once your uh, power level uh, has uh, incre uh, gained a level, uh, your character does more damage. Okay, you get buffs. Right? You get buffs, you get more health, you get more damage, and it also heals you. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess that's... So it's really important that you donate your gold to the people. Aren't you allergic to yeah. Brother? Jeffrey of Nottingham. Yeah, one of the little... Uh, one of the brothers of uh, Maid The Marian. many brothers. The many brothers of <laughs> Maid Marian. Yeah, and... Um, 
Oh, and actually, there's like there's the same uh, ferrum coil mechanic that we saw earlier. Yeah. But there's no there's no uh, static antenna here. Yeah, it's slightly right. remixed. It's now uh, an uh, enemy itself is uh, carrying it. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah. And it's uh, that's something we're really focused on. Uh, to make the encounters uh, unique and different, to create yeah. different scenarios. Their own gimmicks, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so essentially, the guy carries around this tower that makes everyone invulnerable, and mm -hmm. he becomes your priority target, because yeah. before killing him, you cannot kill anyone else. Yeah, exactly. Mm. These are some of the, uh, what we call elite enemies. Uh, they're called uh, Dragoons, yeah. um, and they, uh, are way more uh, powerful, so this is like the first time in the game you would actually like see them. Man, Tuck is really uh, powerful. Yeah. Uh, you see the little tanks. John performing one of his uh, abilities, the the heat beam, which was this big uh, energy yeah. beam you saw. And the whole point of Tuck is that uh, he can charge his attack to make them yeah. really yeah. strong and to have unique properties. Yeah, yeah. Really wanted to make him feel like a uh, a powerhouse, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was the concept or the idea of uh, we're trading um, speed and agility for just raw, pure yeah. power. And it's interesting how it different it is from Marion yeah. that can uh, stack daggers on enemies before unleashing yeah. them. You also have like Little John. Little John, you need to time his punches right to build up heat to unleash like this, you know, very powerful attacks. Yeah. Uh, Robin has these um, what we call the star arrows that are suspended arrows that you can then home on the enemies. Yeah. Um, so they really played like in very different ways. Yeah, yeah. But those are some more the advanced mechanics yeah. of the of the characters. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talk more about like how you can customize them to really make it, you know. Yeah, yeah, we have a we have a really cool system for uh, making it so that uh, your character feels different and unique. Yeah, like player expression is something that yeah, uh, it's something we really, really try to focus yeah, on. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how it went there. Mm. And I also like a lot the the environment a lot how different it is from the catacombs we mm -hmm. saw earlier. And this part of the level is actually um, the laboratory of the prioress. Mm -hmm. She's um, a kind of like mad scientist that mm -hmm. starts to build an army. Uh, we'll, not, we'll not like tell everything about the story, but uh, you can see here like just her laboratory. Yeah. And, uh, and, and in these tanks all around, there's probably like, uh, uh, you know, corpses mm -hmm. floating. Uh, as you can see, the enemies here are the Gatling enemies, mm. who are uh, kind of more advanced enemies. And they have a shield, right? They have a shield and they have this automatic um, uh, crossbow Gatling yeah. that uh, can pass through the enemies from afar. And a big guy over there that's uh, shooting fireballs around and has the big shield is the, what we call the shield puncher. Mm -hmm. He's more of an elite enemy. He has this unbreakable shield in front of him. Yeah. So fighting him from the front is, uh, is kind of pointless. So you need to hit him so from the back. So you need to hit him in the back, yeah, like as you can see here. Mm -hmm. It really creates like a different like dynamic on like how the players uh, advance the uh, enemies. The rebirth of my child, born from flesh and steel, drenched with so much blood. But we want more. And there's the Fires. big boss herself. Yeah, the Fires of Kirklees. And her minion, Red Roger. That concludes our deep dive into a level in, uh, of Gangs of Sherwood. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, show you uh, other levels and go deeper into the mechanics and the characters and everything the game has to offer. And yeah, we have, uh, we have way yeah. more to showcase. Yeah. yeah, so thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you again soon with more information about Gangs of Sherwood. Bye-bye.